Meta learning is fascinating. Think back to when you were this tiny human. This thing <laughs> loves learning, a sponge for information. Learning was exciting, effortless, but somewhere along the way that curiosity faded. Learning becomes a chore, and unfortunately schools rarely teach you how to learn. Sometimes by dumb luck you stumble upon a strategy that works for you, and the rest of the time you feel lost. You don't know where to begin, have a clear path, and trust your own process. Fortunately, by the end of this video, you'll learn and understand how to learn faster, better, and smarter and become a super learner. And it can change the way you approach learning forever. From a new language, a musical instrument, or breaking down complex subjects in school to accelerating a career. For those that don't know me, I'm John. I'm known for graduating college in one year, buying a house at age 20, traveling the world, and speed running life's milestones. And one of the things I've been asked is, what's my process of learning? And also my past mistakes and obstacles with learning. I'm gonna break it down into two sections my methods and processes I use, and biological mechanisms behind learning. I stumbled upon meta learning in high school, which is learning about one's own learning and learning processes, meta denoting something of a higher or second order kind. Essentially, meta learning is learning about learning. I found it from Tim Ferriss in the book, The 4-Hour Chef, and in his book, he discusses a four-part learning method. Though, to understand any of this, we have to understand the learning process. Whenever I start something new, whether it's a YouTube channel, a new business, or picking up a new skill, I'm filled with enthusiasm and optimism. Most people experience the same thing. In standing at the top of what some call Mount Stupid, a peak of uninformed optimism. And it's in the stage where everything seems possible and the road ahead looks clear and easy. But as I progress, reality starts to set in. I move from uninformed optimism to informed pessimism, descending into the valley of despair. This is where most people quit and the initial excitement fades and the challenges seem awful. Yet it's in this valley where actual growth starts. For example, learning to get abs. Getting a six pack seems pretty simple. I'm aware of what needs to be done and it's diet, exercise, and recovery. And when you start, you have that spark, that glow in your eyes. You create a plan of going to the gym every day. Then as you do it, you encounter challenges. You then realize, oh crap, it's a lot of work. And the original plan of going to the gym daily turns into missing a day, then three, a week, a month, then it's gone. Same thing with starting a business, a new subject, and learning about learning. The awareness and the information is there. It's just the time and energy and attention required for persistence through this valley that takes mental fortitude and conditioning. But we enter into the cycle unknowingly and knowingly all the time. It's like a friend or a cousin that always starts something new and never sees it to completion because they ride the high initially then start something new to experience that same high. People that have something successful going already are just riding the high of all the work that has been done previously and continuously masters their craft. And with the cycle, we always need a target. Like a GPS, we need a destination, an aim. And like a GPS, there are infinite possibilities and ways of getting to your destination. Though regardless of how you get there, all that matters is that end destination. Each person has varying methods based on their condition or their current location on the map. With my story on graduating college in one year, that was my aim, the destination. And this is what Stephen Collar calls a high hard goal. These goals are the big targets you're aiming for, like becoming a doctor, buying a house, or relocating to a different city. This is the mission. Then you have chunked goals and clear goals, which are the steps you take to complete the mission. Chunk goals are the goals you slice into annual, quarterly, monthly, and weekly goal markers to stay on track, and the tiny steps that add up to the big result. A high hard goal can take years to complete, and the way you approach each of these types of goals is just as important as making a distinction between them. Clear goals are simply the tiny daily steps that will help you accomplish the high hard goals. And why does this target matter so much? In The Art of Impossible, Stephen Cutler discusses that consciousness is an extremely limited resource. Every second, millions of bits of information floods into your senses. And to understand what another person is saying takes about 40 bits. If three people are talking at once, we're maxed out. All incoming information is invisible to us, but it's not just other people talking that we miss noticing. The vast majority of everything happening in the world falls into this category, and the system is constantly overloaded. So much of reality is constantly invisible. Much of what remains visible is simply the stuff that scares us, because evolution shaped the brain for survival, so anything that could threaten that survival always grabs our attention. 
But what else is important for our survival? Our goals and anything that can help us achieve those goals. Because the brain is a prediction engine and consciousness is a limited resource. Fear and goals are the basic building blocks of our reality. Something to run away from and something to run to. The brain is always trying to predict what is about to happen next and how much energy will be required for that situation. To make those predictions, three systems come into play. Information acquisition, pattern recognition, and goal direction. And the best way to do this is to source information and to feed as much of it as you can to your lovely prediction engine. Lectures, reading, audio visuals. It's building the scaffolding that's needed. Your brain is like an artist's canvas where every piece of information is a brushstroke. The more information you get, the more vibrant and detailed the picture becomes. Again, it's a prediction recognition system. Even with this YouTube video, I'm sourcing a lot of information, synthesizing it down, and then sharing it with you. We then want to direct this into the four-step learning system for rapid skill acquisition. So Tim Ferriss is a master at this, but this applies to anything. Take apart the skill, and what are the basic building blocks? Dissect as much of it as you can, and Tim does this with swimming, language, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and other skills. An easy way is a simple Google search of A 20 and the thing you're trying to learn. Most pop songs are constructed out of four or five chords. Mastering those chords will get you faster results in learning songs than other methods. Tim Ferriss mastered one chokehold for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu rather than mastering all of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He then used this chokehold for attacking and defending. This was his 20%. Mastering this allowed him to leverage this in 80% of the situations he encountered. For me, I focused on getting college credits to graduate earlier, the minimal viable result to get my credits qualified. And if you're a student and interested in what I did, you can check out my videos on graduating college in one year and other free resources I've included. The 80-20 rule is not a secret. It's not a shortcut to immediate results. It is nothing like that. The 80-20 rule is simply awareness or rather analysis. What you do with it is what actually matters. Tim then puts the pieces together, practicing them in different orders and avoids rote learning. He then adds in stakes because having skin in the game commits you to learning with a price pact. Though it's great to have a fire under you, you need something to go after, which is setting milestones and tracking your progress. I've included a free habit tracker I created and use daily to keep track of my own habits. And it does a great job of getting through this middle section when giving up is such a very easy occurrence. One caveat of this method mentioned by Stephen Cutler is that though you'd get results in a short period of time, it isn't necessarily meant for mastery. For true mastery, you wouldn't want to 80-20 all of it. It's a lifelong craft where you'd want to dive into all the pieces. But for Tim, this made sense. Tim then directs it to the cafe method, a secondary framework for learning a skill that goes hand in hand with the disc method. Taking that 20% and compressing it down to a comprehensive one pager. Images, mind maps, flashcards, I do the same thing with my videos. Then it's repetition. How frequently should Tim practice? Can Tim cram? And what should his schedule look like with the stakes that are involved? What growing pains can he predict? And what is the minimal effective dose for volume? To understand minimum effective dose deeper, to boil water, the MED is 212 degrees Fahrenheit at standard air pressure. Boiled is boiled. Higher temperatures do not make it more boiled. Higher temperatures just consume more resources that could be used for something else more productive. In biological systems, exceeding your MED can freeze progress for weeks, even months. More is not better. Indeed, your greatest challenge will be resisting the temptation to do more. The MED not only delivers the most dramatic results, but it does so in the least possible time. But wait, there's more. You can optimize learning using the Ultradian performance rhythm generate as many repetitions, and inject rest within the learning episodes. Andrew Huberman explains it better in this video. The attempt to learn skills, the vital thing to do is to get lots of repetition. The bottom line is you need to generate many, many repetitions of something that you're trying to learn. And the errors that you generate are also very important for learning. It also turns out that taking rest within the learning episode is very important. When you're trying to learn something, it's beneficial, it's been shown in scientific studies, that if you take a 20 minute shallow nap, or you simply do nothing after a period of learning, that it enhances the rates of learning and the depth of learning, your ability to learn and remember that information. 
What I'm about to describe are new data that say that you actually should be, should be injecting rest within the learning episode. Tim then anchors the new material to what he already knows for Rapid Recall. Acronyms like DIS and CAFE are examples of encoding. Mnemonics, memory palace, acronyms, imagery, retrieval practice are all ways of exercising encoding. All of this is to build myelin, which speeds up the brain signal with practice. Imagine your brain is like a big highway and the messages it sends are like the cars traveling on that highway. When you first start learning something new, the road is a bit bumpy, so the cars or messages move slowly. But every time you practice, it's like adding a new layer of pavement, making the road smoother. This pavement in your brain is called myelin. The more you practice, the more myelin builds up around the paths in your brain that helps you do that activity. With more myelin, the cars, messages, can zoom much faster and easier down the highway. So the more you practice, the faster and better you get at the skill because your brain's highways are smoother, making it easier to do things without conscious effort. As you repeat an action, the neurons associated with that action will have their axons wrapped in myelin. So every time you put in an hour of practice, you earn yourself another wrap of myelin around the neurons used for that activity. More myelin means nerve impulses can travel more quickly and efficiently across the axons. This means the action can be done more easily, skillfully, and will require less concentration. The ultimate goal of this is combating the forgetting curve. Within the first hour, people can forget up to 50% of newly learned information. By the end of the first day, they might forget about 70% of the information. By the end of the week, forgetting can increase to around 90%. Compression, frequency, and encoding is all used to support active recall, which is do the thing. Each time you learn, you're strengthening neural pathways, which strengthens the connections and allows you to essentially know something by instinct. A majority of learning happens when you do the thing. Consuming information is very minimal, but actually doing and teaching allows you to learn rapidly, like demonstration, discussion, practice by doing, and teaching others. So after you watch this video and you don't do anything with it, it'll be a distant memory. Or you could watch my other videos and continue to improve your life. And help me show the algorithm that this was valuable by clicking on the like button and commenting in the comment section, which pushes my face to other people, which helps them out, helps me out, and I get to produce more videos. I'll see you in the next one.